Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, every month, we have a, a message of the month, all right? But there are certain months of the year um, that through the guidance of the Spirit, we have a very clear message, right? And this is one of them. So you tell me, what is the message of this month? This month is what? Yes, you're right. This is the month of thanksgiving. And it's important for us to recognize what God wants us to do. Did you know he actually wants us to live a life of thanksgiving? It's one of the ways to be in perfect health, absolute health. Now, don't let anybody deceive you and tell you that nobody can be perfectly healthy. You know, they say things that uh, are of human understanding and they want to make them laws for everybody else. It's just human experience. And they push the human experience to be like it's God's word. But God's word completely says something to the contrary. I'm going to show you in the Bible in a second. But in Colossians chapter 1, reading from verse 12, Colossians chapter 1, Now, maybe I should, I should give it to you from uh, verse 10. Because the, the apostle prays for this Colossian church and says what kind of prayer it's praying for them. He says that he might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. That's extraordinary. It's so beautiful. He's telling us this is God's will. Because he's praying the will of the Father, that he might walk worthy of the Lord. He wants your daily life to be worthy of the Lord. Then it says, unto all pleasing. Pleasing. That your life should always be pleasing to the Father. Jesus said, I always please my Father. He says, I do that which pleases my Father, always. Then he adds something there, being fruitful in every good work. Think about it. When your life is fruitful in every good work. You know, some people don't know why they're not fruitful. They say, I don't know. I don't get good results. Well, you're supposed to. You're supposed to always be fruitful. Look at it. Being fruitful in every good work. That's an excellent life. Being fruitful in every good work. And at the same time, increasing in the knowledge of God. Now, there are people who, when they get involved in their work, they don't increase in the knowledge of God. Also, you know, you know because of my business, oh, because of my work, um, I don't have time to pray. I don't have time to study the scriptures. I don't have time to grow in the things of God. Well, that means something is wrong in the way your life is going. Because a true Christian life is worthy of the Lord, pleasing to the Lord, fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Remarkable. But that's not where we're going. We're going someplace more. Strengthened, look at that. Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power. I'm strengthened. Hallelujah. With all might according to God's glorious power, on to all patience and long-suffering with joyfulness. <laughs> Look at that. So, 
no matter what you're going through, you can be what? Patient. Yeah. Look at that. And then with endurance. And at the same time, all of that with joyfulness. Joyfulness. He doesn't want you going through some kind of situation without joy, downcast. No, no, no. With joyfulness. Joyfulness is of the spirit. Now, while at this, here's where we're going. Giving thanks. You see, your life. With all what we just read, which has to do with your, with your every moment life, everyday life, you come to this point, giving thanks. He wants your life to be a life of thanksgiving. Always giving thanks. Giving thanks unto the Father which had made us meet. That means qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints. In the kingdom of light. Now, this is remarkable. I just want you to notice. Giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us. Look at the tenses. It's not a promise. It's not going to make us. He's not about to make us. He hath made us qualified to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, in the kingdom of light, that is. He's made us to be partakers. So I am a partaker, a sharer of the inheritance of the saints. And part of that inheritance is the divine life, which comes with divine health. Divine health has been granted us in Christ Jesus. And he wants you to live a life of thanksgiving. So begin this month to live a life of thanksgiving. So when you get into January, it's still thanksgiving, a life of thanksgiving. And in February, and in March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and then December again. Right? That's what God wants for you. So say, I'm living a life of thanksgiving. I'm giving thanks to God. Always for all thanks. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Giving thanks unto the Father, which had made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Who hath delivered us? Oh, wow. Who hath delivered us? He's not trying to deliver us. He's not hoping to deliver us. He's not planning on delivering us if we pray hard enough. Who hath delivered us? Look at the tenses. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us. That means transferred us. Look at that. Into the kingdom of his dear son. Meaning that now we have been located. So we know where we are now. I am in his kingdom now. I live in his kingdom now. That's my life. I live in God's kingdom now. It's got to be your consciousness because he translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have, look at that, next verse, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. So that should read remission of sins. Remission of sins. Blessed be God. I live in his kingdom now and I live a life of thanksgiving. Constantly giving thanks. See that? That'll keep you in health. Always. Remember, it's God's will for you to be healthy. In 3rd John, 3rd Epistle of St. John, verse number 2. Look at that. 
Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. So you see, your soul is prospering through the Word of God and the Spirit of God. And then it says, I wish above all things that you prosper. That's talking about material and financial prosperity. And then it says, and be in health. God wants you to be in health. So it's not true, like some people say, that somehow God uses sickness to tempt us or to test us. No, he doesn't use Satan's tools to test us. He doesn't. He doesn't. If you go to James chapter 1, from verse 13. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. Right? No. The word is also translated try. He doesn't try you with evil. doesn't try you with evil. So sickness never comes from God in any form. Remember, in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, it says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. God sent Jesus, and he went about doing good. Healing is good. See that? He went about doing good. And healing all that were oppressed of the devil. So everyone that Jesus healed, there was none of them that was made sick by God. They were all oppressed of the devil, not God. All right, so how does God want you? Can you go to Acts chapter 3? You're going to love this one. In Acts chapter 3, look at verse 16. When the man at the gate of the temple called Beautiful got healed, and Peter, after healing the man, in fact, we, we discussed that uh, yesterday at the Global Day of Prayer. We discussed that yesterday. Where Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. Because Jesus sent them to heal. You remember that? In St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 10, uh, from verse 7. And as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He says, heal the sick. Wow, that's power. He didn't say pray for them. He said, heal them. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. That's what he said to us. Cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. So, when you heal the sick, you are giving the sick something. You're giving them healing, right? When you cleanse the lepers, you're bringing them freedom from leprosy. Oh, boy. And we can raise the dead because he gave us a life-giving spirit. We have a life-giving spirit. That's who we are. When you're born again, you have a new nature. It's the nature of Christ. And that's a, a life-giving spirit. And then he told us, cast out devils. So that's what Peter did at that gate. When he says, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he says, rise up and walk. But here's what I want you to notice, and it's beautiful. Acts chapter 3, verse 16, when he was addressing the issue and talking to the people about it, about that healing. He says, and his name. Now, go to verse 15. He was, he was accusing them of killing Jesus Christ. He said to them, you killed the prince of life whom God had raised from the dead. Talking about Jesus. Whereof we are witnesses. Okay? Now, go from there. And his name is Jesus. 
and his name, through faith in his name, had made this man strong. The man that was healed. All right? The man who had been lame from his mother's womb. Now healed. His name, the name of Jesus, through faith in his name, had made this man strong. Whom you see and know, they know him. So he says, you know him. Because they've been keeping him at the, at the gate. They brought him daily to that place. He says, yea, the faith which is by him had given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. This is really amazing. That man was given perfect soundness. Holocleria. That's in the Greek. Perfect soundness. It means to be in a perfect state of health. Did you say that? Holocleria means perfect state of health. It is a condition of health where you got no problems whatsoever. And it says, his name, through faith in his name, had given this man this perfect soundness. Perfect soundness. Now, it wasn't just for this man alone. You go to the book of James, chapter 1. From verse 4. But let patience... It's talking about, oh, I, love this. I love this. But let patience have her perfect work, that she may be perfect and entire. The word translated entire is holocleros. Okay, that's the verb of holocleria. Holocleros. Entire. He wants you to be entire. That means to be perfectly sound. Did you see that? Wanting, lacking nothing. What a life. That's what he wants for you. Perfect and entire. Lacking nothing. And to make this happen, he gave us, to make this happen, he gave us. Remember? Thank you, Lord Jesus. He gave us the Holy Ghost. He gave us the Holy Ghost. That's why you have the Holy Spirit. He's the Spirit of life. In Romans chapter 8, when you read... Romans chapter 8, first in verse 2, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin. And had made me free from death. So death doesn't work in you, but life. Glory be to God. Now, you go to verse 10. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Now, if you if you use a uh, a proper King James translation, you would notice that several words there 
are italicized. And the reason is because of the manuscripts and the missing links in the manuscripts. So it's supposed to read, and if Christ be in you, though your body be dead because of sin, the Spirit gives it life because of righteousness. That's, that's amazing. That's amazing. In verse 11, the word translated but doesn't have to be but, okay? It's day in the Greek. It can be and, now, then, so. You get it? Because but here doesn't give it the right connection that it's supposed to have, especially if it's well translated in verse 10. Anyway, you have, but if the spirit of him, or and if the spirit of him, or now if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken. That means make alive your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Did you see that? The Spirit makes your body alive. Keeps your body alive. The Holy Ghost keeps your body alive. It's one of the reasons for speaking in tongues. The Bible says, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. See, you charge your spirit like a battery does. You get charged, and then that power flows from your spirit all through your physical body. So the Holy Ghost perambulates your body and keeps you immune from, the, from disease of any kind. The spirit keeps you immune from disease. So the Christian life is a special life. Can you see it? So Christianity is not a way of life. As some people think it's not a way of life it's not a religion Christianity is actually the life of Christ in a human being it is a life of God at work in you it is a life of Jesus Christ lived out in a human being that's wonderful that's wonderful that's wonderful. And that's why the Bible says, remember, remember this. First John chapter 4, verse 17. Remember, look at it again. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. Now, several translations use, they say, the, they say uh, we are like him. No, like is not the best word because it's a little watered down in the English communication. Us is a little stronger. Us, as he is, so are we. Not so we're going to be. So are we in this world. Glory be to God. So this month, practice thanksgiving. Practice thanksgiving. This month, practice Thanksgiving. And then always remember, always remember, in prayer, let me show it to you, in Hebrews chapter 13, in verse 15, it says, by him, by Jesus Christ, Therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. See, that's a life of thanksgiving. Offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. Then he explains it. He says, that is the fruit of our lips, words, giving thanks to his name. 
Now, let's read this from the Amplified Translation. You're going to like it. Through Him, through Jesus Christ, therefore, let us constantly and at all times offer up to God a sacrifice of praise, which is the fruit of lips that thankfully acknowledge and confess and glorify His name. I loved it when Pastor K was leading in prayer earlier on today. That was a typical way of praying in the way he just told us, the fruit of our lips, thankfully acknowledging and confessing and glorifying his name. The way he led in that prayer, the words that he spoke. You know, these are things you have to learn. How do you talk to God? How do you pray? How do you pray? What words do you say to him? That's why we study the scriptures. We look at what did the prophets say? What did Jesus say? What did the apostles say? What's written for us in the New Testament? How are we to express ourselves to God? What do we say when we talk to him? You don't just say whatever you like. Somebody said, I can, I can, I can say what I like to God. No, not quite. Not quite. Not quite. The Bible tells us to prepare what we're going to say to God. Prepare words that we're going to say to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So at this moment, I want you to pray. Give thanks to God. You notice what, what, what I just showed you in that last verse. 15th verse of the 13th chapter, the book of Hebrews. It says, the fruit of lips that thankfully acknowledge and confess and glorify his name. Speak like that to God. Thankfully acknowledge. Acknowledge him in your life. Acknowledge what he's done in your life and what he's done for you. Confess and glorify his name. Confess his name. Confess the greatness of His name. Glorify His name. Recognize what He's done in your life. He's protected you. He's kept you. He's guided you to know Him. He gave you a heart that loves God. All that is a work of grace, you see. Thank Him for the Holy Ghost in your life, the Holy Spirit in your life. Thank Him for giving you divine health. Hallelujah. 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 Kibra costa lindro nongro devra haski fraste le grostes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 